As I was working on the script for an upcoming Enduro 101 video, I realized that there is some trail footage I want to showcase that I don't have archived. If you're wondering, what is an Enduro 101 video? Head to the Seat Time Facebook or Instagram account and read up on the questions and comments I am gathering there. In short, an Enduro 101 video will showcase all the things a new Enduro racer needs to be prepared for enjoying their first Enduro adventure. Knowing I wanted to put some content out to help those who are going to be getting back to racing and riding, I dug into my notes and remembered this epic picture of Mike Lafferty at the 2020 Greenbrier Enduro before 2020 turned into a dumpster fire. This picture caught my attention for many reasons, and they're all reasons we can learn from. Before we get too deep, I want you to know that Mike Lafferty won the Enduro overall he was on a licensed dual sport, and he did it from row 95. That is just damn impressive. I'm going to break down this picture, showcase to you, the viewer, why Mike Lafferty's riding position is so well articulated. To do this, though, I also have to talk about some pictures of those with less aggressive body positioning. At the end of the video, you and I will have key points that we can ride away with and practice the next time we ride our dirt bikes. To get started, let's talk about where Lafferty's eyes are and how far down the trail he is looking. As a young whippersnapper on my XR80, broken zipper and torn jersey, I remember hearing, look ahead, look down the trail, don't stare at the front fender, or why are you looking at your gas tank? All of these phrases either came from my dad, you know him as Papa Pierce, or from the many other racers who passed me time and time again at the kids races. But why? Why were they telling me to look ahead? When we look down the trail, we know what is coming. When we know what is coming, we can better prepare for what lies ahead. This is our best chance to be proactive with the obstacles and quick course directional changes that will be happening in front of us. If we are focusing on the exact spot we are in, or the spot directly in front of us, i.e. the front fender, we are only able to be reactive to what we come across on the trail. This means our reaction time is slowed down and we technically cannot go as fast. Knowing what lies ahead, or which way the trail is going to go, allows us to set up our body and bike to carry the most momentum we can muster down the trail. Log crossings, rock gardens, or even quick right-hand turns are great examples of this. In the picture we have here, the way Lafferty is looking many feet down the trail gives him the time to adjust his bike, body, and mind for whatever lies ahead. Let's zoom out on the picture so we can look at the rest of Lafferty's body position. One, he is standing up. Why does that matter? Standing up allows more incremental control over the motorcycle. If you're sitting, your mass is part of the motorcycle. If you're standing, your mass is separate and can be used to manipulate the motorcycle. Two, he is leaning the motorcycle over so the tires are as parallel to the ground as he can get them. But because he is standing, he can lean his body weight to the outside peg of the motorcycle. Weighting the outside peg pushes the motorcycle into the ground so he can get maximum traction. His bike and body are working in tandem in this picture they are not fighting each other. Third is the forward placement of his body on the motorcycle. Again, he is standing and due to this, he can get his body weight further over the front end of the motorcycle. We want our body weight as forward as possible during a turn so we can get the front tire to dig in for maximum traction. Last key points of Lafferty's body position are his limbs. Look at the way he is connecting himself to the motorcycle. His hands are lightly grasping the bars, one finger on the clutch, just in case, and he's on the balls of his feet. Looking at his right foot and the rear brake, it's tough to tell if he is actively braking, but I doubt that he is. Typically, faster racers like Lafferty brake before the turn starts, and they carry momentum through the arc of the turn. He may have his right heel on the foot peg, keeping his foot placement in preparation mode for quick rear brake activation. To make this a bit more relatable to the average rider, let's look at pictures that could be any one of us out there on the trail. 90A. This is probably what the majority of B riders look like. Sitting down, decent body placement, but foot out and not really pushing the threshold. 
This rider could get his weight more toward the front wheel, standing up if comfortable, and leaning the bike over a bit more. 64C. This rider may have an eye ailment, so don't take this as me picking on this rider specifically, more his body positioning. If you catch yourself with your visor this low, try and raise it up. It blocks your view down the trail, potentially doing more harm than good. Body position and dual number plates tell me this rider might just be out for a Sunday stroll, and that's totally okay. 89B. This rider has his weight extremely far back on the saddle. If he needed to make a quick adjustment on the bike, he'd be up the creek without a paddle. Keeping our weight forward over the front wheel while in a turn allows for better traction and more control over placement of the motorcycle on the trail. 90C. This A or B racer has control and can probably go pretty fast, but he's not carrying much speed into the turn. The bike is too upright and his weight is too far back. With some turn practice, this racer could be carrying a lot more speed into every turn and winning more races in the B class. This is skill practice that needs to happen. See the tips video to know more about skill and technique practice learning versus endurance training. 88A, biggest mishap in this photo is eye placement. This rider is looking just above his front fender. He's not able to prepare for what could be happening as he exits the turn or a few feet down the trail. A downed rider or a quick log crossing would throw this racer for a loop as it would catch him completely off guard. To wrap it up, I'm gonna give you guys five key points of performance. One, look through the turn and down the trail. Practice looking further and further ahead every time you are working on skill work. Two, get your weight forward on the motorcycle while turning. Think crotch on the gas tank when you practice and see how far forward you can get your body position. Three, stand up and break leading into the turn, not while in the turn. This takes practice. A figure eight track or a nice oval track will give you 10 to 15 minutes of fun working on these techniques. Four, lean the motorcycle and weight the outside peg. This will dig the tires in and help you keep traction as you are carrying speed. And five, Stay on the balls of your feet and keep your limbs prepared. Majority of enduro races, you don't know what's coming. You need to stay light, agile, and prepared for anything. Thanks for watching today, guys. Hopefully you can ride away from this video with some things to go off and work on. It's been a lot of fun to talk with riders more and more about how they can improve their speed and enjoyment on the bike. Let me know what you thought about my breakdown, and also, if I missed anything, make sure you call it out in the comments below. As always, if you're not a subscriber, think about hitting the subscribe button. If you think a friend could get some help from the thoughts shared here, please share this video with them. Support Seat Time by grabbing a shirt from Pint Services or Threadless, link in the description. If nothing else, give this video a thumbs up, and I hope to see y'all on the trail soon. Always enjoy a pint full of awesome.